And we begin another week with Jim Whitaker, president of the Berkeley County Commission via telephone. Jim, good morning to you, sir. Hey, good morning, everybody. You say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> Amen. Did you plant any this uh, this year? No, you don't want me planting anything. I tell you, my thumb's not that green. I'm really good at killing it, but uh, <laughs> I tell you, I'd, I'd rather leave that to the more experienced green thumbs. Jim, you're half Italian. You got to be able to grow a tomato. Uh, I can I can grow my my size when I eat all the good pasta. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. He I grows his own pasta. Myself. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey yeah. you can do that now because you can make Boston noodles out of cauliflower. Jim, you're, beca you're becoming big time. Last week on Hoppy's show, next week probably on Good Morning America. And who who knows where you go next? Well, America. I tell you what, I like to stand right at home here with you guys. So it, uh, you, all, uh, you all spoil me. So I'll just stay right here. How's that? That works for me, especially this morning at this time. You are in Emmitsburg this morning. What are you doing there, sir? Uh, we have a contract uh, that's uh, working on some uh, rehabilitation of a tunnel here at on a facility, and they had a lot of um, decommissioned piping, <coughs> excuse me, pipes that we took out, and I'm repairing some damage that uh, the long term of uh, rusting rebar and things like that. So, uh, and now we're uh, we're just finally doing the uh, the final cleanup and putting things back together. Are you allowed to say where you are? Because it's it's quite the site, by the way, there in Emmitsburg. It is, yeah. We're up here at the uh, National Fallen Firefighters Memorial here at Emmitsburg mm. at the FEMA location. Yeah, yeah. I recommend but, everybody visit there, by the way. Are, yes, yes, are, it is. Very solemn sometimes when yeah. you're here and they're having a, um, an event going on. Are the tunnels large enough, Jim, for you to get some of your excavation equipment in? No, no. This was all uh, all small enough that uh, we did everything by hand and, and had a uh, an access tunnel or an access, I guess, channel that we were able to bring everything out of and so now we're putting it all back together to make it uh, watertight again well bill was asking because as you know as he's getting older he's shrinking <laughs> and he's looking for a little side work jim so maybe some tunnel excavation give him a pick and send him in there for eight hours that's right and once there you get are. and once you get me down jim on my knees you're not don't have to worry about me getting up i'm going to stay there for the duration send in a yellow jacket he'll come running out <laughs> that'll move him fast well, I was lucky enough that they were they they, uh, they allowed me to come out of the tunnel. I think a few times they wanted to just seal me up in it. But, uh, <laughs> that, that would have been a tomb of an of an unknown excavator. So. Amen. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jim, you on Thursday, as well as many other dignitaries in the area involved, uh, north end of the county in the CMC. Uh, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't call it an opening because it's not like the the factory's up and running yet. But uh, it, this was uh, a, a big marking event and the occasion of this company coming to the area. Yes, it was. It was the official groundbreaking. Uh, it, it's going to be a pretty exciting. Uh, they have uh, a multitude of products that they that they um, uh, manufacture and, and ship around the world. But I think most of this is going to be uh, like a, a lot of the recycled steel that's going to be claimed from other commercial facilities, and and they're going to bring it to their uh, and their process is very. Um, um, environmentally uh, coordinated to, to be a low emission producing. Uh, they're going to re-smelt uh, re or smelt all the iron again and then return it back into a usable product. Jim, do you know what their target start date is for that? Uh, 20, it's, uh, I think they're hoping for uh, spring of 2025. Spring of 25. Bill? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Jim. Uh, good morning. Uh, the governor was up here along with uh, uh, several other uh, state officials. Uh, the state, I assume, was very much involved in bringing CMC to the area, to the state. Is that correct? Yes, they were. They were very anxious to uh, to have CMC come to this area. And it's kind of fitting where they're, where they're putting it. Um, it's in the location of the former DuPont property. And you know, when you when you kind of look at the history of about how the steel was manufactured, a lot of it probably came from our own limestone quarries, and of course the dynamite that was made there at Dupont years ago helped produce the the high, cal high calcium lime and and uh, or the stone in order to uh, to make the steel. So there might be some of the steel coming back to to uh, Martinsburg or Berkeley County that they're going to be reprocessing again. How much does the state put in as far as dollar wise to encourage the company to come here? Uh, oh, Bill, I'm sorry. I don't have that figure right in front of me, but it was upwards of several uh, tens of million. Tens of millions. That's, okay. Yeah, I, I think so. I could be 
I don't quote me or don't hold me to that number, but I can find out. I, yeah. I just wasn't given that information. Yeah, I suspect that's a little bit too large, uh, I, but I do imagine there's several hundred thousand invested. Uh, did, this, did the county give a pilot program as well, Jim? Yes, we did. Uh, they are uh, going to be very good uh, community uh, partners for our, our quality of life. Uh, they have uh, committed 125000 a year for the next seven years in order to uh, help name the, uh, the rights for the uh, Independence Day project or the celebration that we're having out by the airport now. So they, uh, they have really uh, stepped up and, and want to be a good community, uh, community partner to, um, uh, to improve the quality of life here in Berkeley County. And was a pilot the, the standard or the typical seven-year uh, pilot, and then where the, that's a peak of uh, saving the tax dollars? Yes. Yeah. Okay. At the at the end of it, uh, it'll return um, mostly back towards the um, uh, the, the current uh, taxing situations or the taxing am- amounts that uh, that would normally be um, uh, be given at for anybody that that's not in, in a pilot program. Yeah, uh, Jim. For one, I applaud you and your fellow commissioners for doing this. That you're not going to get these folks to come in unless there's some. Uh, some effort on the part of the county to make them their investment worthwhile. So I, I applaud you for it. Uh, they're they're doing exactly. They're they're making a rebar that will be. Uh, it's a different type of rebar, is it not? Yes, it is. Some of it they can uh, they will have different uh, categories of it. It will um, some of it can be on a big spool, so the linear spool would uh, be cut to length, or that they would even have it coated for a non-corrosives or corrosive material protection and things like that. Hi, Jim. This is John Gilstrap. Um, just yes. Let me put a vote in favor of CMC. I, my last big boy job was for a trade association that represented the scrap recycling industry, ISRI, Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries. And I was a safety director for that. And I would tell you my interactions with CMC in general have been very positive. It's a very, it's a classy, it's a class act. It's a good company. It's good to know. Do we know how many employees are going to be uh, working at this yeah. new site? Yeah, the projected uh, number of employees is 230, I think, at full production, possibly more. And how many of those, so, do we have an idea, are going to be transfers from other companies? Because it's a mini uh, mill like that is actually pretty high-tech Yeah, operation. they have actually started uh, some hiring of a couple of locals right now that I know of. Uh, they're going to be probably um, uh, helping in, in partnership with uh, Blue Ridge Community and possibly James Rumsey uh, for their training aspects of uh, of what their needs are going to be. And the, the the construction work is being done by local companies as well, or are they bringing in their own? I think uh, it's probably going to be a little bit of both. I'm not sure that um, – I think the the dirt workforce here is, is, has a real good chance of, uh, of of being part of the project. When it comes to the actual mechanicals of the uh, of the, the construction of the building, I'm not sure, but I do know that there's probably going to be local unions that'll be be, be able to provide uh, the forces that they're going to need. So. And there are always negative voices when it comes down to doing a project like this. Is, do we have a lot of that with the CMC project, or is it pretty – I haven't heard a lot of negatives coming out of it. Is, is there pretty broad support across the board? Well, I mean, on our level, yes, it's, it, we've got good support. But I'm sure now once that the, um, the announcement's been made, I'm, I'm having uh, um, probably we'll, – we'll probably hear more if there's any negativity. But right now I haven't uh, – I haven't heard anything, uh, you know, detrimental to the uh, to the company. I'll say this: that uh, Vice President uh, Gokenauer and also President Copenhaver, they actually flew to their facility and and they were very impressed uh, of um, of their setup and and how the uh, technology that they're using is very environmentally um, safe. Jim, going back, uh, Damon Wright just said that uh, Metro News in December said the state will contribute seventy-five million dollars to the to the project. So you were right; it's seventy-five million. Yeah, I, I, it was several. I, I thought yeah. that it was. Yeah. yeah. Jim Whitaker is our guest during the program. He is the president of the Berkeley County Commission, and he is uh, on site in Emmitsburg right now on a project where we discuss the CMC groundbreaking that took place. 
north end of the county on Thursday of this past week. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Jim, you made the mention of, kind of alluded to, but it deserves to be developed a little bit more, and that's the role of Blue Ridge and James Rumsey. Uh, each one of our major companies coming in, uh, uh, Macy's, uh, Procter & Gamble, uh, Clorox and the like, uh, Blue Ridge, I know of, and probably James Rumsey as well, have developed programs, tailored programs to those companies to train the employees. Uh, that has been, I I have found, to be a major inducement uh, to get some of these companies to come in to ensure that we have a quality workforce that is trained by these institutions just for that particular uh, industry. Yes, sir. I think that the uh, those both those schools are um, are, are very well uh, much more capable of of giving them the workforce, the education that they need, and and uh, and giving them the quality employee that they're going to have at uh, at those facilities. Yeah, if you are correct. Bill. Yeah, a couple of years, a few years ago now, a uh, a windmill company was proposed to come into Berkeley County. We found out later it was they were using Berkeley County as a leverage, trying to get a more of a sweetheart deal from the county they were located in, in Tennessee. Uh, but it required very sophisticated remote welding, and Pete Chekovich in Blue Ridge was prepared to set up a full curriculum for this company and it, it, it's a testament of how uh how involved our local institutions are in trying to promote the economy in the county oh yeah that they, they um you you ask them uh if they can do something i don't think i've ever heard them say no we can't do it i believe that uh, they are capable of of producing uh any curriculum that would be needed for any industry or any any business here and up and down the east coast if they so choose to use us and I'd welcome that at any time. So, hey Jim, I figured there had to be a lot, of, a fair amount of competition from other localities to get the CMC plant to to locate there. Do we know what the tipping point was? What the decision maker was for CMC to choose Berkeley County over whatever else they were looking at? Oh, I think it was. Uh, I'll give all the credit to uh, to the staff that uh, that really sold Berkeley County. Um, I would love to say, yeah, it was my uh, my discussion with them in a in a personal conversation, but that just wasn't it. Uh, I think that they saw how the benefit of Berkeley County and its and our geographical location that their product can be shipped, you know, in two thirds of the of the population of the United States within eight hours. And I think that that probably has a lot to do with it. Um, I do I do hope that um, our Department of Highways and our infrastructure. Uh, will be uh, will we'll be looked at by the state and saying, okay, we need to we need to put some more resources over in the eastern Panhandle and, and get them caught up on a on a few things. And so that was uh, that was a little bit of a conversation that we had there that um, I think we all agree upon. We we can manage, but it would be so much nicer to have it better. Now Winchester and Western uh, Rail runs through that property, does it not, Jim? It does, and they played an in intricate role in uh, um, being able to provide that rail spur and the service that uh, that CMC is going to need for their uh, raw materials product coming in as well as uh, their material going out. Jim, the water requirements of uh, a factory of that size, and I assume it wouldn't have been approved if we couldn't meet those needs, but do you know any specifics regarding that? No specifics, uh, but I think with the ability of the um, Potomac Water Works that uh, Berkeley County PSD has, as well as the um, uh, Public Service Sewer District, they will be able to accommodate anything that uh, that CMC needs. I'm sure there'll be certain um, aspects of it that will have to be monitored closely if if there's a, a byproduct that, that may have to be taken care of a little bit different, but. I'm sure all the environmentalists and the um, and the engineers are working on that. Does the county have anything to do with that, or is that all state monitoring? Most of that's going to be state monitoring. The county doesn't uh, monitor itself, I mean, those types of things. So like the EPA or DEP, they'll be the monitors of it. Now, you, we're talking about the waste material from DuPont, uh, uh, DuPont Days of Manufacturing. Is that what we're talking about, Jim? Uh well, if that does become like a, 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 I don't want to call it problematic, but if there's any issues that they will have to be remediated, I'm sure that that's when the uh, the departments will be able to come in and say, well, this is how it has to be done, and you know, for the um, 
I guess, for the remediation of it, yeah. As well as once they're up and running, monitoring the water for any discharge into the river. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yes, there's two angles yeah. to that, absolutely. Yeah. Jim, let's talk about the air show because uh, that's, uh, I think, when we last talked to you about it, that was months away, but it's no longer that far away now. Nope. It's uh, August 26th and 27th at the Martinsburg Airport. The air show itself will start at 3 in the afternoon, and it will go until 5 in the evening, uh, along with uh, several other um, um, events that we'll probably have, like a kid's um, youth area. There'll be, I think, um, projects that they'll be able to be hands-on, uh, you know, for fun times. But the uh, all the vendors have uh, been selected, and all the uh, the shows, uh, the sponsorships. Uh, we could always use more sponsorships, but the um, but the announcement of the air acts, uh, they are ongoing, and uh, we're still hoping for. Uh, um, uh, we'd love to say the jet team, the Thunderbirds, or the Blue Angels, but that that's not going to happen this year. But we do have several uh, military jet acts that will be taken uh, taken to the skies. Bill. How about the old aircraft, Jim? Are we still having some uh, some yep, World War II? Uh, the commemorative, yeah. Yep, the yep. commemorative Air Force will be uh, having some of their aircraft being brought in. Um, there'll be a lot of vintage um, other types of airplanes, and, of course, our local aviation group. They're going to have their uh, private uh, planes, some of their home builds out there, and, you know, you'll be able to, to walk by and, and look at the, uh, the craftsmanship that we uh, – that we have at our own airport and the, and the abilities of uh, fellow pilots that uh, that build the build these airplanes and fly them around quite a lot. So, looking looking forward to the days coming. Yeah, uh, several years ago they experimented with having balloons here, but I assume there will not be balloons this year. I haven't heard of anything coming, um, but however, a balloon fest does sound like something be to be uh, to be looked at. I, I believe that would be a, a pretty neat um, event. Because they say the early morning rise of a balloon, it it it, it can be uh, can be very calming. Yeah, uh, I think Nick Dale has addressed this in the past, and the balloons are so uh, are so fickle in the environment they can operate. They if it's too windy, they cannot be used, cannot be uh, launched. If it's not enough air, uh, there's several factors involved. So the last time we had the balloons, they sat on the ground the whole time. So. Yeah, that 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 is uh, definitely uh, a, a, an item that you would have to deal with. That's at any balloon event anywhere in the you know in in the United States. The wind does play a big factor on even air shows. You know, there's uh, clouds. You don't want to be up in the clouds too much. Uh, the air show box itself will be restricted to only the air show performers, and all other aircraft around the area will have to divert around it. So there'll be those. Uh, informational um, notums that will be put out uh, to all the airlines, and, and everybody will know about it uh, up and down the East Coast who's going to be flying in that, that area. How many air shows do we have in the immediate vicinity, Jim? I'm talking about in Pennsylvania, uh, Maryland, and Virginia. Ooh, not that many. I tell you, this one here is the only one in the state of West Virginia that we're having. Of course, it does celebrate the uh, the 100th birthday of our airport, the first landing there. The um, I think the next closest one is probably going to be around the D.C. area. Ocean City does Ocean City, Maryland does a wonderful job. They have a they have a beachfront uh, stadium that uh, that everybody gets to watch for the air show there. But um, I would say there's on the small scale anywhere from from um, seven on up to to ten or twelve around the uh, I'd say a three hundred mile radius of this airport. So not a lot of competition then. Okay. No, no, I don't think there's not much this year. Now, Jim, you said the air show is from three to five. Is that just the airborne element? Or is there an all-day part of this where people go and wander around and yes. see things? And yes, it is. There, there's um, there's going to be activities all day long. I mean, the gates open I think at twelve, so there'll there'll be activities for uh, for the young and old and uh, uh, the young at heart and the old at heart both. So we'll. Um, um, we will have, um, oh gosh, I, I should probably have Nick on with me here for giving me the, the actual details of everything. But, um, but yeah, they'll, um, uh, it'll be an all day affair. Cause I do know that, um, in the evening they, they do have, um, I think we were talking about having a fireworks display in the evening. So that will linger on into the evening very well. And after the sun kind of goes down, so. 
Sounds like a great opportunity for a vendor to sell reclining lawn chairs to go in. <laughs> it, it will be. Yep. Yep. I would, I would say if you have one to bring, I would, I would highly recommend that you bring a lawn chair with you. County, and, a, and a good pair of sunglasses. Yeah. County Commission President Jim Whitaker is our guest here on the program. Jim, I remember covering these years ago in the 90s. The Stealth Bomber uh, did a flyby the one year. Uh, it was not uncommon for the uh, Air Guard to open up one of the transport planes and let people tour inside those. Will those sorts of things be going on this year as well? Yes, they are. They're going to have uh, one of the C-17s that's going to be over there for the um, – uh, for their display and take a look at, um, you'll be able to enter on them and uh, see all the activities that the Air Guard performs and, and how they uh, go about their missions. Bill? Yeah, uh, Jim, as is c quite common, our Facebook chat uh, contributors are picking up on a point that they're making. They'd like to see Mike Height be actively involved in some role, most notably jumping out of an airplane with or without a parachute. <laughs> well, with or without? Maybe. Well, why, why don't we uh, why don't we see if we can get him to do some wing walking? We'll get one of the uh, the performers there to strap him on a wing and, and see if we can't make him uh, squirm a little bit once he's up in the air. You know, there's a downside to this. Uh, John Gilscrap will uh -oh. have lost his major villain in his next book <laughs> if if we lose height. So we got to protect height. Well, we're going to lose him in the yeah. book anyway. So, <laughs> well, you know. It would it would be a great loss for anything, but uh, but but I'd say well, somebody's got to you know take the sacrifice. Well, I, don't, I know uh, Height was in the uh, service. I don't know if he ever jumped out of a plane, but I know his brother Jimmy did an awful lot of uh, jumping out. I think he was a paratrooper, if I recall. Well, my plan is not to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, but uh, if I have to, it better be a. It better be worth my while. So. Yeah, that's probably a good plan. Jim, we've got about a minute left. Anything our, uh, our our audience needs to know about regarding county business that we haven't covered? Uh, I can't think of anything right now, um, but I guarantee as soon as I hang up the phone, I'll think of something, that's for sure. Very good, sir. Well, I appreciate your time this morning. I know you're busy, so I always, always appreciate you carving out a few minutes for us. Yeah, I apologize for the for the doorbells here that were going off. Uh, we had to move some stuff around and, and had our, another crew come in. So um, I didn't I, even I'm notice. I'm not it. driving. Yeah. I'm not driving. I was a passenger, so I just yeah. had to enjoy the. the <laughs> no the worries. Stubblefield's something. phone is yeah. always going off during the show, Jim. So if it wasn't one thing, it'd be another thing. <laughs> all righty. Well, guys, it's always good talking with you all, and I hope to see you all at the air show, or if not, sooner. Thank Thanks, you, Jim. Jim, stay out of the tunnels. Uh, uh huh. Bye bye.